15分15分経ったら絶対何してるんだろう、うん、待ってもうちょっと見てたい This anime is gonna be pretty good At the beginning of 2022 If you told me that my favorite show this year wouldn't be your Attack on Titans, Dress Up Dogs or Spikes Families of the World and instead be a show about a high school girl with social anxiety joining a band I wouldn't fucking believe you And then it happened, and now I'm really confused. Originally, I was gonna title this video The Second Coming of Kaon, but after watching eight weeks of what has generally been some of the best anime I've seen for the better part of half a decade, titling this video that feels like I'm doing a huge disservice to it. It's like that meme with Yoshi, except this time it's at first I expected a Kaon clone, and then I accidentally found Anime of the Year. Can we turn that off? Originally, in this part of the video, I had a cool intro bit edited to episode 5's intro song, Guitar Loneliness and Blue Planet. But because copyright is copyright, that is now gone. I am sorry. We'll just continue on with the video. Much like the fairly sleeper hit that was Licorice Recall of last season, folks, I present to you Butchie the Rock. Coming in at number 11 on any chart and number 12 on MAL, there's a good chance that, according to these lists, you're probably not watching it. And can I blame you? Not really. Blue Lock, Bleach, Spike's Family, Mob Psycho, fucking Chainsaw Man. It's understandable why those shows are more popular, but Butchie is truly something special that deserves way more attention than it's getting. One of the reasons why it's been so enjoyable to watch is because it feels like a safe haven from all that high action. But what actually is Butchie? I've already made a very clear comparison between it and Kaon, and that's not for nothing. On paper, they have some pretty striking similarities. A first year high school student feels inspired to be a part of something after not doing so their entire life, so on a whim, they join a band becoming its lead guitarist. Of course though, there are differences, specifically with our two main characters. Yui is more of an outgoing type, who learns how to play the guitar after joining the Light Music Club. Meanwhile, Hitori Goto, nicknamed Bochi, already has three years of guitar playing experience under her belt, and her nickname comes from the term Hitori Bochi, which means to be all alone. This unfortunately suits not only her name, but also her lifestyle. But she's not entirely alone because when in doubt, she always has her subscribers to fall back on. Going by the name Guitar Hero, Hitori records and uploads music covers all through the comfort of a very cramped and dark closet. And because of her skills, she's amassed a pretty decent following. She plays with talent beyond her years, but it all comes crashing down once she talks to anyone. You see, Hitori has social anxiety. Bad social anxiety. This obviously causes issues because more than anything in the world, she wishes to play in a band because... It's the reason why she decided to play guitar in the first place, and even if Hitori herself can't join or form a band due to her social skills, it doesn't mean somebody else can. Enter Nijika Ijichi, cheery, upbeat, and leader of Keisoku Band. She meets Hitori and drags her along to a Japanese life house for an impromptu performance. Through that experience, she then joins Keisoku Band and meets fellow bandmates Ryo Yamada and Ikuyo Kita, ultimately kickstarting Hitori's journey of figuring out what it means to be in a band and what it truly means to have friends. But of course, my saying of this stuff doesn't do the show justice, so what really gives Butchie that special sauce? That extra 10%? That defining factor that separates a show from being kinda mid to challenging the spot for best anime of the year in a year that's stacked enough as is? The answer? Getting the small stuff right, I think. Butchie isn't as good as it is simply because of one core component, but rather because of its combination of a bunch of minute details. The team behind the show is incredibly creative, and you can definitely see it while watching. Just in episode 1, Butchie literally passes out and there's a fourth wall breaking credits roll mid-episode. You then have the many uses of various real life elements like paper puppets, the game of life, and whatever the fuck this is. There's also a neat 4x3 segment in episode 7 that's overly dramatic and depicts the horrors of being an introvert during a cultural festival, and my personal favorite is Butchie with her funny little asides where it seems that she can pull her guitar out of virtually anywhere, making a song out of any situation. That's a lot of the goofy stuff though, so let's get a little more serious. Early on while watching the show, I noticed that characters sometimes do a thing, which I will now coin as Sakuga walking. Overly animated, strangely smooth, 
smooth and seemingly for no reason until I found that said reason. There's an incredibly interesting interview that I'll link down below with many members of Butchie the Rock staff, including series director Keichiro Saito. To my amazement, there was actually a section that talked about movement, and I think I get why they Sakuga walk. It's to showcase the varying personalities of these characters through their movements. And this doesn't just apply to them normally walking, but also to their performances as well. Butchie is noticeably less confident than the other three, preferring to keep her head down. Ryo and Nichika will sometimes nod to each other mid-performance because of their history together. And Kita looks like an absolute natural who's been doing this for years because she's intuitively sociable. And speaking of those performances, the songs in this anime fucking slap. I'm a huge fan of music anime in general, and J-Rock is easily one of my favorite genres of music. The opening is a great way to lure you in. High energy, catchy, great vocals, and you're just like, okay, well, how much better can it really- So much fucking better! It's like fucking Stardust or something when you first hear episode 5's insert song. You know they've been working so hard to perform it, especially Butchie, because she's the one that wrote the damn lyrics. It's got that punk rock influence, and the lyrics for the song are emo social outcasty because it's written by Butchie, but it's fine because that's something we can all tap into because life is hard sometimes, man. From the opening to the intro songs, it's so hype. And remember those insane cutaways from before? That all comes straight from Butchie's mind. She's bad at communicating, so it only makes sense for her to wander off into her own world mid-conversation. And that's actually one of my favorite parts about this show. It strikes this amazing balance between a slice-of-life comedy and, bear with me here, a coming-of-age drama. It's not afraid to highlight what it means to be an introvert, what it means to have social anxiety. It's done very tastefully, which a lot of people can appreciate, myself included. It's a beautifully executed dichotomy of laughing at Butchie because of her absurdity, but also really feeling for Butchie's struggle and cheering for her when she does something cool. This sort of irregular characterization of Butchie's character is one of the many things that elevate the show beyond the regular slice of life. It makes her feel human. More than just a cute girl doing a cute thing, she's a cute girl with real issues that you can relate to. It executes this element so well that it goes all the way down to the design of Butchie's outfit, which is a full-on tracksuit paired with a skirt. Which fits not only the unusualness of Butchie in comparison to her peers and other high school girls of the like, but also the unorthodox nature of the show itself. Butchie the Rock is a show that surprised me in every way I think it's sought out to do. Everything about it screams quality, and it's reached heights that I, nor anyone else, could have expected. The journey it takes you on while rooting for Butchie is one that will blow you away, and it's sad to think that a show of this caliber might get passed up on simply because MAPPA has a show airing this season. It's a formula that's not unfamiliar, but with execution we've never seen, and I really don't mean this lightly when I say this, but I wholeheartedly believe that it's reached the pinnacle surpassing even that of the original. And that's about it. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Last time we spoke, I said I was working on a cyberpunk video, but I could never hit the ground running with that script, so to speak. So I started writing this butchy one as a side project, and well, here we are. It's really fun. The show's obviously amazing, and it kind of exploded in popularity as I wrote this script, which is something I've never seen before. I'm happy for its success, and I'm also happy that I managed to finish this video as the show was ending. But uh, yeah, that's been it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.